Well, if you're in the mood for some live musical performances or just want to go inside the new president's house at NDSU, there is a special event going on tonight. And I'm Michelle, and I think I know what senators want BP to do with their bonuses. Trucks have been hauling clay and sandbags all day long in the hopes of shoring up people's homes against the rising waters. Twin Cities nurses voted to strike again, this time for much longer. This is what I get for sharing my personal life with my coworkers. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually Concordia. But they're warning people not to let their guard down. Schools and businesses remain closed. No travel is advised. President Obama will meet with the commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan at the White House today after he made some disparaging remarks about Obama administration officials. Where women are throwing their underwear at a heartthrob mayoral candidate. Next up. Um, Dennis Walliker? Uh, probably. <laughs> Mean. We're in far south Fargo along University Drive, a busy thoroughfare where trucks have been hauling clay and sandbags all day long in the hopes of shoring up people's homes against the rising waters. Now many of the people that live in this neighborhood have been through this before, but I don't suspect anyone who lived through the flood of 97 ever suspected the water would be rising like it did that year again so soon. Now, things are changing very quickly and turning very scary. The big need today is for volunteers. And the need is for two million bags to be filled with sand and then to be placed. Now, there are many variables that are happening and that we're dealing with that, the forecast with more rain, a possible snowstorm and thunderstorms. Today, Mayor Wallacher said we need to have a very good day and that call for help is being answered. The three colleges and universities in town, North Dakota State University, Concordia College, and Minnesota State University, Moorhead, all canceled classes today so students could come out and help. Also, all the local high schools canceled classes, so we had many students giving up their day at school to come out and help. Hundreds of students lined up to volunteer this morning. So how does it feel? <laughs> the big question remains, can all of this get done in time? The mayor says they will revisit this with all the variables that are happening and may have to announce a plan B on Wednesday. And again, the sheriff's in town saying anyone who has time to gawk, has time to sandbag, they will either make you volunteer or put you in jail. Good morning, 530. I'm Mick Kerr. And I'm Michelle Turnberry. Good morning. We've got another severe weather day. And so welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Jumping right out of the frying pan into the fire. Yeah. So and it was a frying pan out on in the on the East Coast. Oh man. Oh, I bet. Hot and humid and Overnight, the votes were counted, and for the second time, Minnesota nurses overwhelmingly voted for another strike. The Minnesota Nurses Association says 84% of the nurses voted yes to authorize an open-ended strike. The nurses must give the hospitals a 10-day notice, but after that, they can strike any time. About 12,000 nurses at 14 Twin Cities hospitals went on a one-day strike on June 10th over staffing levels and pensions. As of this morning, no new talks between the union and the hospitals have been scheduled. A number of new rules governing the sales and marketing of tobacco products go into effect today. One year ago, President Obama signed a law giving the FDA authority to regulate tobacco products. Today, we see the first fruits of that law. The FDA now prohibits giving free samples of cigarettes or selling packs with fewer than 20 cigarettes. Sales of cigarettes in vending machines will be much more severely restricted. Tobacco brand names will no longer be able to sponsor social or cultural events or sports teams. The new regulations also prohibit the sale of hats and t-shirts with tobacco brands or logos on them. More problems for an area hit hard by rising water. At least 25 roads around Devils Lake are impassable right now. And more are ready to go under after four inches of rain yesterday. These photos taken by Huck Kruger of Devil's Lake show farms and land flooded for miles. And here's a bridge that isn't doing much good. There's several more bridges in the area that look just like this. Buildings, roads and fields are covered by water from Devil's Lake. A National Guard helicopter is on standby to make sure floodwaters don't prevent people from getting emergency medical attention if needed. Governor John Hoven will visit the Devil's Lake Basin today to meet with officials dealing with the high water there. He'll meet with Devil's Lake and Ramsey County officials around 9 this morning, then meet with Minnewaukan and Benson County officials later in the day. This morning, the White House budget director says he is stepping down. Peter Orsag will leave his job in July. Orsag took the job a year and a half ago after serving as director of the Congressional Budget Office. From the beginning, he said he didn't want to stay for more than two years, and since he's getting married in September, he felt the timing was right. The federal government has sent BP another bill to cover costs from that massive oil spill in the Gulf, this time for $51 million. And in New Orleans, a federal judge could rule either today or tomorrow on a lawsuit to lift the president's six-month moratorium on offshore drilling. 
The ban, which affects 72 of the nearly 4,000 oil platforms in the Gulf, is being challenged by the industry. Could soon be illegal to text while driving in the city of Grand Forks. City council members voted to move ahead with a ban on texting behind the wheel. Some cities are going in this direction after lawmakers failed to pass a statewide ban. Valley News Team's Matt Bradley shows us how the idea was received. Hey, the Wheelmobile in town this week. We have another watch and win winner today. Danette Clever of Lamore, we won a fabulous watch and win goodie bag. She knew Friday's bonus puzzle solution and entered it on our website, bellynewslive.com. You can still win all this week. Just watch Wheel of Fortune on KX4 tonight. And if you know the bonus puzzle, enter it on our website. Tune in this time tomorrow to see if you've won. All right, very good. Congratulations to our winners. Yeah. That's exciting. All right, wow. Well, when the wheel comes to town. Coming this week. Yeah. I know. Well, your news continues on valleynewslive.com. Also, be sure to check us out on Facebook. Friend us, join the Valley Today fan page, send us your pictures, stay in touch with us so we can share those pictures with everyone else and let everybody know what's going on in your neck of the woods. We'll be back throughout the morning and with updates again at noon on KX4. City officials seemed more confident at this morning's flood meeting, but they're warning people not to let their guard down. Schools and businesses remain closed, no travel is advised. And talking with people around town today, the thing I notice is that while people seem positive, they're tired. Many people have been working around the clock, volunteering, and then going to their own homes and never being able to let their guard down. Now, if you're familiar with Fargo-Moorhead, the region is very flat, which means extra water around here is like pouring water on a cookie sheet. It just goes everywhere. So if you're not sandbagging your home near the river, you're watching your sump pump and hoping the power stays on and it keeps working so your basement doesn't fill up, or the sewer doesn't back up, or you're hoping overland flooding doesn't suddenly inundate your home, all of which people here are dealing with. Chris and I. Well, you know what's stunning here to listen to you and to see these pictures that we're showing right now is this whole notion that the river could crest as high as it has, go back down, and come back up again two weeks later to near the height it is now. That's what you're talking about, and that is still two weeks from now. Yeah, that's that's the scary news that we got late this afternoon. And, you know, looking outside right now, I mean, this is some heavy, heavy wet snow. There's a lot of water coming with this. And, you know, I think once that sinks in, that we could be going through this in just a couple more weeks. It, it's a scary situation. And just looking around town, trying to explain that to people who aren't living here, it's scary. So, uh, you know, we certainly appreciate all the help we've gotten from people around the state and the Twin Cities. And I think we're going to need it for some time. Good morning, 530. I'm Mick Carey. And I'm Michelle Turnberg. Good morning on this Thursday. Viva la Thursday. Yeah, I was yeah. so inspired last night. Planted more flowers. Oh, boy. Boy, you, Chris, are they on sale now? Is well, the, no. No, I'm waiting for them to go on sale, you know, like 10 for a dollar or something. My like girlfriend that. was like, it's like August. What are you planting flowers for? <laughs> Okay, yeah, it's late June, but never I just too never late. got around to it never before. Too, I have like three or four empty hanging baskets, yeah. and like I'm waiting for them to go on sale. You know, before those little greenhouses yeah, you can in the drop parking some lots disappear. Cash pretty easily. Doesn't take long. Good day for growing stuff. Good. Warmer than yesterday, Good. and probably a little. The legal tug of war in the Gulf continues this morning. The Department of Justice is seeking a stay of a federal judge's order to block a six-month moratorium on deepwater drilling. That while teams are still dealing with the latest setback at the spill site. Jay Gray has the latest from Venice, Louisiana. Congress will be watching when bonuses are paid out to BP executives. A Louisiana lawmaker asked the oil giant's chairman to suspend bonuses indefinitely so the money can be used to reimburse Gulf Coast residents. This morning, General Stanley McChrystal is out, and the process of replacing him with General David Petraeus is on the fast track. Confirmation hearings for Petraeus are set to begin on Tuesday, and lawmakers say it could be the fastest confirmation in history. Yesterday, four-star General McChrystal lost his job for criticizing uh, his boss, the president, in public. Many lawmakers are hoping Petraeus can turn around the war in Afghanistan like he did in Iraq. A town nearly flattened by a tornado is now dealing with another problem, crime. Police in Wadena, Minnesota, arrested a contractor. The man from Forest Lake, Minnesota, was posing as a FEMA and OSHA representative to get into people's homes and then ask them for business. Officers say there have also been reports of looting, but no confirmed cases yet. Police say all legitimate contractors will have a permit, and if they stop anybody who can't show one, they will be escorted out of town. Wadena police say they won't be needing any more large groups of volunteers for cleanup. Sergeant Tom Crawford says the city has had an overwhelming response of people helping out already. If you would still like to volunteer, city leaders say they will be working on the fairgrounds next. Sunday will be a day of rest. 
Some homeowners say they've learned a valuable lesson when it comes to neighborhood improvement projects. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Kelly News Team's Trisha O'Connor is here to explain why a group of Moorhead neighbors say it's too late to fix what they call an eyesore. Bethany Retirement Living will host its annual summer carnival. Steve and Wade are there now to show us how they're getting ready and what things they have planned. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Michelle. Thanks, Steve. Coming up next on the Valley Today, why fitness balls are replacing chairs in one classroom and how they're not only helping kids concentrate, but stay in shape.